good afternoon everyone respected chairpersons the great honor for me to be here in the city of indore greetings from city of patliputra uh, i think we have heard a number of uh, lecture on uh, psychological aspect of uh, diabetes and certainly it makes big difference in the life of people living with diabetes once you look after them not only on the medical part but also the social part of uh, their life and uh, dr ram was uh, very nicely talking on the topic of uh, how to uh, smile and what are the benefits of uh, smile my talk is on multi morbidity so most of the diabetic people have uh, diabetes associated with the other comorbid conditions so that is very uh, imp- that is a p- problem which we face even day to day life and uh, there is a distress which was again uh, elaborated by our previous speaker so i'll start my talk with this very important uh, slide and uh, i love to quote this uh, uh, evidence based medicine we talk a lot of uh, evidence based medicine in different uh, discussion and we must consider Uh, uh, uh the the father of uh, evidence based medicine dr david sackett from macmasters what he suggested that uh, it has a triad of three things the best available evidence we try to create a prescription which has all evidence and data in terms of a big number of rcts or or maybe other studies and and we try to push that information in terms of guidelines and then these guidelines makes the prescription a huge one for the people uh, to follow and it becomes very difficult so we also should consider the other aspect of evidence based medicine and that is the patient values and belief that is what dr ram was talking that we should understand that what they think and what we should consider uh, their 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 thought about the medication like we discussed about insulin the therapy will be never successful unless until what patient believes and what he thinks and how we counsel them and then it is our expertise other than it comes once you combine these three factors it becomes a evidence based medicine uh, for our people living with diabetes and uh, this is how the prescription should be designed so uh, let us uh, see the introduction of uh, what is multi morbidity according to who who the coexistence of two or more chronic conditions in the same individual uh, we call it as multi morbidity and the growing population especially older population have a, a more comorbid condition and now of late we are seeing that diabetes is coming up in younger generations also younger population so we have a longer life and we are going to see more of multi morbid conditions and in general population we also see that there is no universal definition for polypharmacy now that uh, most commonly who says that if you have five drugs or more you call it as a, 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 a polypharmacy so uh, multi morbidity simultaneously increases the use of multiple medications so both have a vicious relation like you prescribe too many drugs and you you are going to push other complications and drug related adverse reactions in in coming in in their life so optimizing for uh, pharmacotherapy and assessing the appropriateness of prescription becomes a big issue for us and we must consider uh, how best we should design and what are the things to be considered and you will need a lot of uh, uh, consultation and time to be spent if at all they are developing any a drug related adverb so my talk is of two two different aspect of uh, diabetes one one is multi morbidity and then you have a polypharmacy associated with that so you can see that more than 80% people with living with diabetes they have uh, this multi morbidity i think we all see day day in or out that uh, none of our patient who have lived more than 15 years and so they have uh, a number of other conditions we have to consider and i'm i'm not going to go with the details but then you know that you have hypertension dyslipidemia and so on so to have a framework on these uh, the factors which are responsible for multi morbidity is defined as proximal factors and distal factors and these are nothing 
you have age related sex related education socio economic status you now very important that we do consider that longer the life we have more multi morbidity and then socio economic condition also because people with low social strata they have more of multi morbidity because they would not have uh, taken care uh, 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 the the treatment part in an early stage of life and then we have uh, proximal factors which again uh, we have genetic factor and behavior factor smoking and other uh, bad uh, habits which they have uh, uh, and then we have uh, these uh, uh, three important uh, comorbid conditions which are associated maybe a traditional complications and then we have non traditional concordant conditions and then we have emerging discordant conditions i think to understand that we have traditional complications like microvascular and macrovascular complication which we normally see in our life and there are non non traditional concordant co uh, comorbidities which share common factors and pathophysiological defect uh, maybe like liver disease or cancers which are quite commonly associated and then we have emerging discordant comorbidities they do not have a clear cut connection etiological connection but they do often uh, happens like uh, what was talked a depression asthma arthritis and so on so i think we have three aspects of uh, multi morbidity which uh, normally hits people life and then we have the age factor which we just discussed the higher the age the higher the multi morbidity and the important is uh, to just see this uh, study uh, uh, which was published where they show that with multi morbidity even lower a1c you have more complications and increasing multi morbidity significantly decreases increases the mortality in such group and they don't have the link with hb1c alone so we have to consider this condition more uh, cautiously and the challenges which we have with this multi morbidity is again the complex treatment the first slide which i showed you that patient uh, have this evidence based medicine what we have the complex therapy which is not followed because we don't actually practice most of time is called evidence based medicine because we forget the aspect of patient's beliefs and his uh, his uh, uh, willingness to consider the treatment so in patient with diabetes hypertension and chronic kidney disease may require multiple medication with different dosing schedule and potential side effects are also there so these are the challenges we have care coordination the patient will be visiting i uh, many a time different consultant and all of us will be advising something which is not in 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 the, in the same line uh, one will tell that okay you should not one will tell you should then patient becomes a bit confused that is another challenge then uh, again adherence uh, we have just discussed how difficult it is for patient and we need to consider a uh, uh, a different behavior techniques which i am not going to discuss but we all should learn about there are different behavior techniques for for a patient to change behavior and that comes from a uh, uh, trans theoretical model where you have to understand there are five stages and you have to shift the patient from stage 1 to stage 2 and so on so that the patient becomes more compliant to you if you leave them just as they come for that you need time to discuss risk of hypoglycemia and other uh, the most important is healthcare cost which has to be considered when we we dis we we see these conditions so i think i'm not going to discuss in detail but we have basically this is a from the cluster study where they have uh, uh, described the multi morbidity in three different groups like cardiometabolic precursors condition vascular and mental health i think mental health has been discussed in a big way this is a dutch diabetes per cohort where again they have shown that there is a, there are interactions between different drugs and it it doesn't happen every time so you need to consider each patient separately and you should individualize i'll just give you some snapshots of uh, interactions between different drugs hope it is visible i think uh, most commonly common drug which we practice we we which we need for our people is sulfonylurea and there are a number of uh, interactions between different drugs so uh, i'm not going to read out whole is but we know that these drugs ha may have and the patient may be suffering from one or other interactions so we should consider the last part where there are there are moderate minor and maybe high interactions and we should consider uh, uh, before prescribing or in follow up visit that if they are having any issue re related to these uh, uh, interactions uh, 
Again, the common drug like metformin, thiazolid in Diane, and DPP-4, in, which is now uh, very commonly used. So again, we have a lot of interactions which have to, co to consider uh, uh, in, in such cases. Uh, this is a, a angioedema, which is very commonly seen with ACE inhibitor when they are prescribed together with DPP-4. And uh, if at all we have uh, we have risk prescribing, we should be looking after uh, these conditions, and we should uh, treat them accordingly. ACE and with sulfonylurea, maybe they are more prone for sometime hypoglycemia because of increased vasodilatation. Metformin very commonly prescribed. We have anemia, B12 malabsorption, which has to be considered. Anticholinergic drugs can cause uh, oral bioavailability of metformin. Uh, uh, due to increased GI mortality in creatine and SGLT2 are let have a together they can be used quite easily that is a so uh, we should consider different drugs when we are prescribing I'm not going to give whole list here but uh, multi uh, uh, polypharmacy needs to be carefully witnessed and see if uh, somebody is having any other rela relevant issue and in, in, in this term, we also have artificial intelligence, which is coming and which gives uh, a good uh, uh, amount of uh, idea about these things. Many times people will come with some, some issues and they will not tell that they are taking some over-the-counter drug or at times they may take some uh, herbal products which also have interactions which we are not aware of. So we need to discuss with the patient whether they are taking any uh, some uh, some. Uh, uh, a herbal product like aloe vera or ginseng or sometimes karela juices and so much. I mean, we, we are still, uh, we have uh, in our country, this is quite uh, prevalent that people use and we don't know that uh, patient has interactions. So we have to consider all the effect. Most of the time it is either hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia, which happens due to use of these uh, different uh, uh, drugs, uh, which is not even in our knowledge. So the, while ma doing a multimorbid uh, patient prescription, recognize clinical context and its prog prognosis and promote patient care and manage medications carefully. If it is good to have a polypharmacy to less pharmacy, and, and, and I think we should also consider these multiple drugs, especially insulin, uh, will uh, cause further in, uh, distress, which I think uh, we have discussed four out of uh, uh, one out of four diabetic type one will be suffering from depression and in type two diabetes, even if they're on insulin, five, one out of five will have depression symptoms and then non-insulin also, we have 10 out of, one out of 10 will have this. So we should uh, look uh, carefully if our people have any of these symptoms of uh, depression due to, due to the therapy or due to the polypharmacy and they, they have to, have these uh, causes like emotional burden, regimen distress, fear of complication and interpersonal relations. And then because of these depression, the therapy fails. People will have suboptimal self-management, elevated A1C and more frequent hypoglycemia if they are having this diabetes distress. So we should address them adequately at the time. And I, I'm not going to discuss on the scales, but yes, it is good to consider having a diabetic distress scale, which is different from the uh, proper de uh, other depressions. So we have to look at these points and we should discuss, uh, consider and, and this is the uh, main management sc uh, sc scheme for diabetes distress. Uh, first of all, you arrange a follow-up. We spend time with them, make them aware about it and ask them if at all they have any symptom, then if at all you find, you can assign them to some psychologist or you can also work with them, assess the condition and advise them and then assist them further, you arrange the sec second follow-up. So we have to be very vigilant when, when our people have is developing any such a distress condition in their life. So these are the approaches of uh, different management of uh, distress. I think I'll go to the final slide where uh, we should uh, say that the therapy should be patient-centered. It should not be uh, a guideline center alone. It should have uh, uh, actual evidence-based medicine, which I, which was described by David Sackett. It should be simple to be followed, and you should consider their cognitive uh, compliance and their education level, their socioeconomic strata, and all other things. And it should be a holistic treatment than having uh, only the, the, the therapy which we decide. So I thank over here, and if there is any question, we can go for Thank you.